again. So, do you know the relationship of art and science? If you don't, then keep watching this video and let's find out it together. So, how is art and science related to each other? So, traditionally, art and science have been treated as two separate disciplines. But when they are studied together, it's clear to see the impact one has on the other. A great deal of creativity is required to make scientific breakthroughs and art is just as often an expression of or a product of scientific knowledge. Consider the science behind mixing paint in the correct proportions or creating perspective in a drawing or even imagining the dance of a quart even though I don't know what a quart really is so moving on visual art has been used to document the natural world for thousands of years from cave paintings of animals that help today's researchers to figure out yesterday's fauna to paintings of centuries old experiments that show us how they were conducted one of the most famous examples of the interconnection between art and science is the work of renaissance master leonardo da vinci while da vinci conducted his own experiments and studies other artists were keen to observe and document a rapidly evolving body of scientific knowledge for instance Rembrandt's painting, The Anatomy Lesson, depicts a scientist with a partially dissected corpse and a throng of interested spectators eager to understand the workings of the human body. Among the most interesting examples of the artist as recorder of scientific progress are the paintings of Joseph Wright of Derby who worked at the close of the 18th century and was part of a small circle of intellectuals known as the Lunar Society, so called because they met on the night of the full moon so their horses could see the way home. So one more reason why art and science are more closely related than you think is because science and art are the same thing. So according to Dave Featherstone, a professor of biology and neuroscience, both science and art are human attempts to understand and describe the world around us. The subjects and methods have different traditions, and the intended audiences are different. But I think the motivations and goals are fundamentally the same. I think one of the most primitive innate needs of humans is to understand the world around us and then share that understanding. We need to understand because we are terrified by things that are unpredictable, that don't make sense. I don't care how crazy you say you are, how much you think you like adventure, unpredictability and senselessness are stressful. They drive people to suicide. It happens in war. It happens as a result of neurological disease like schizophrenia. Scary movies are all about unpredictability and things that just cannot be real. We crave order. We crave predictability. The scientists do experiments over and over and over trying to pin down some new aspect of reality. Once they have their new understanding, there are prearranged traditional modes of communication that make that part easier. Artists often start with a new vision, then work through periods in which they explore how best to get the message across. They have shows, they seek feedback to help them understand what works. Artists and scientists often need to invent new concepts and technologies to accomplish their goals. Both science and art 
have useful spin-offs. Applied science is technology. Applied art, on the other hand, is decoration. Technology and decoration are applications of science and art for practical purposes. Technology and decoration make life easier, but they don't change how we fundamentally perceive what is around us. Science and art do. So there are some fascinating artists that are inspired by science. So from the beginning, artists have also been scientists, alchemists who mix their own paint, study the effects of color, and learn how we perceive light. Through our scientific understanding is as great as it has as it has ever been. There are still a plethora of artists who continue to use this knowledge to break new ground with their work. So here are some of the artworks that are made by different artists who are inspired by science. First off, we have the artwork of Jen Stark. So Jen Stark is a contemporary artist whose majority of work involves creating incredible paper sculptures. She also works with drawing and animation. Her work draws inspiration from microscopic patterns in nature, wormholes, and slice anatomy. She is also interested in mathematics, topography, and forms from nature. Another artwork is from Luc Gerard. So, from glass models of microbes and viruses to giant aeolian harps, Jaram uses science like few other artists. His research deals with perception across all of our senses, including the fact that he is colorblind. Jaram builds and manages teams of specialists, including engineers and technicians help create the elaborate works he conceives. Another artwork of Janet Sadkuk. As she says herself, the work of Janet Sadkuk lies at the intersection of light and space and time. Working with astronomers, engineers, and architects, her work is created with metals, especially coated glass. Her reflected images and light create sun drawings that move that and change in response to sunlight and the passage of time. Another artwork is from Fabian Oefner. Fabian Oefner is a Swiss photographer who uses photography to combine art and science. His work often demonstrates the beauty of scientific Phenomena using fire, iridescence, sound waves, and centripetal forces. He creates and captures fascinating images. Another artwork is from George Seurat. Uh, most people know Seurat for his work with pointillism and his Sunday afternoon on La Grande Jet. Uh, painting, but few will know about how Saurat was focused on the science of color, specifically divisionism or chromoluminarism. He extensively studied the science of color, in particular, how to achieve maximum lu luminosity. And required the viewer to mix colors optically rather than mixing pigments on the canvas. Another artwork is from Maria Sibaila Melia. She is known as the woman who made science beautiful. Maria was a naturalist and scientific illustrator in the 1600s. She published her first book of illustrations at age of 28. Fascinating people across Europe 
she subsequently traveled from Europe to South America to paint, study, and research. Her illustrations of metamorphosis of a butterfly contributed significantly to the field of entomology. And the last artwork is from Andy Goldsworthy. So, Andy creates visually striking uh, ephemeral sculptures that uses only elements from nature, whether he is spiraling sticks, arranging leaves, or sculpting with stones. His work hold a simple and natural appeal. So that concludes my uh, discussion about the relationship of art and science and now I will be demonstrating my own artwork. Hello again, so um, I finished my drawing and here's the result. Okay, so as you can see, I use a lot of elements in this artwork. So the center of this artwork is this, the sun that is setting. And I use a lot of uh, values, the, the, uh, the lightings and the shades. So as you can see, the shades of the clouds underneath are much darker. Okay. So the and the lines, as you can see, uh, represents the leaves of the what's called this a pine tree, the leaves of a pine tree, and the curved lines forms a river, and the hill or the mountain so the far back uh, shows the perspective the far side perspective of the background so those are still uh, some pine trees and um, that's about it so guys uh, that is all for today and thank you for listening and watching and I hope you enjoyed this video Again, uh, this is Rafael Pepiton de Isla from BSIT 201A signing out. Peace.